everyone. It's your good friend, Eric. I am so happy that you're here. Thank you for checking out this video. You may be watching it live. You're probably watching the recording. This is one of those impromptu lives that I decided to do. And guess what we're gonna talk about? What we're gonna talk about right now is the question you're getting, am I buying at the top of the market? So I, I hear this so often right now from my realtor friends. They are hearing it from their clients. Their clients are really concerned about this fact and they don't want to buy it at the top of the market. They're really scared about that. So we need to have really, really awesome answers to that. I'm gonna help you with that right here in this video. As always, what I would ask you to do, if this is helpful, give it a like, give it a subscribe. You may be watching this on YouTube. Uh, if so, subscribe to my channel. I push up some good stuff there. If you're watching this on the Facebooks, make sure you like my page, like this video, all of the things, you know, the deal uh, that is so, so helpful for me. And I hope that this video is helpful for you. All right, guys, check it out. As I get my little uh, remote control here going on my PowerPoint presentation that you can see right there. Uh, let's get to this, all right? Uh, we'll get, just get the technology flowing and here we go. So here's the question you all are getting right now. This is the question that you're getting. The question is, am I buying at the top of the market, right? You're getting some version of that. Oh my gosh, am I buying at the top of the market? It seems like the top of the market. I don't want to buy at the top of the market. Um, our price is going to crash, you know, all the things related to that, right? All those questions related to this, related to what's happening in the market right now. So prices are moving fast because of the low, low inventory, because of the bidding wars. Prices are getting bid up. Prices are going up faster than most people have ever seen. And so it's triggering this question. We need to have a really awesome answer to that question. So here we go. I'm going to show you how to answer your clients and also maybe you, all right? Maybe I'm going to help you inside your own head with this question. And if you are having the same doubts that your clients are, guys, that's a problem, all right? That is a problem that can't be happening, all right? So maybe I have to start by convincing you. I'm happy to do that because I can't have you wondering yourself if right now is the top of the market because your clients are going to pick up on that and they're not going to have any confidence either. There's so many reasons. There's so many reasons for you to be 100% confident about the market right now. I'm going to show you all those reasons and I'm going to, again, give you the answers for your clients so they can feel good about their decision uh, to buy right now and so that they are encouraged to keep going even if they're missing out on offers, even if they're getting beat out, this will encourage them to keep going and we give you all the answers, right? So here we go. Here's the framework for the answer. There, you'll see there's several parts to this framework. You may wanna have a pen and paper as, uh, as you're going along here as we go through this together. Here's the framework for the answer. Uh, again, if you're watching live, give it a give it the old like. If you're, um, if you're watching the recording, same thing, give it a like, subscribe, all those things are super, super helpful for me. All right, so here's the framework for the answer. We gotta start with what? We have to start with empathy. We have to start with empathy. And the reason why we wanna start with empathy is because it turns out that empathy is one of the most powerful forces, one of the most uh, important tactics you could ever employ in a crucial conversation. All right, so when the stakes are high, if you bring empathy to the game, you will do yourself and the other person so, so much good. So you gotta start with empathy. So here's what that sounds like with a client. So they bring this up, they're like, hey, look, am I buying at the top of the market right now? I sure don't wanna be buying at the top. Our price is gonna crash. You can't just jump right into the logic and start giving them all your, your dazzling answers. What you need to do is start with empathy and say, hey, look, that is a great question. And I can appreciate so much why you would be asking. And, and here's what you do. You just reflect to them what they are experiencing. You say, look, you're seeing all, all these multiple offers and bidding wars. You're, you're seeing these properties going for much more than list price. You yourself, you, you've lost out a few times. And it's making you wonder, is right now the top of the market? It's making you wonder, can, can this last? Can, can this sustain? And once you that 
understand them, that you empathize with them, and that will give you the permission you need to then give them some really good answers, right? So we can't give them all the logical answers until we empathize with what's going on, like like in their heart, right, and, and in their gut, all right? So we got to do that first, and, and I recommend that you always do that in any kind of an important conversation, always do that first. You got to start with empathy. That's always the most powerful way to start. So then what? So then when they say, well, yeah, you're exactly right. Like you got that right. Like, like that is, that's exactly where we're at. That's exactly what we're thinking. The next place to go, I think is to go immediately, immediately to supply and demand. Just say, look, you know, any kind of, any kind of market, um, any, anything financial related, it, it always comes down to two simple things, supply and demand, right? And so they're going to they're gonna agree on that. And then what you can say is, you know, let's, let's look at our, the demand side of things right now. And if they don't know already, walk them through the specific numbers related to demand. Um, so you may be able to say something like, you know what, related to last year compared to a year ago, our inventory is down 50% or maybe for you it's 60% or 70%. Our inventory right now is running at one tenth of, of the long term average. The reality is, is that we've never seen inventory at this low of a level ever before in our lifetime. And if we compare it to 2008, because by the way, a lot of people have 2008 on their minds when they bring this whole thing up, right? They're like, oh man, I don't want to go through that again, or I don't want to look, look silly or look foolish and, and be the person that's buying right before the bubble burst or anything. So you need to bring that up. So 2008, part of the problem was we had a glut of inventory. Specifically, we had a glut of new construction on the market. Today, we have the opposite of that. The reality is that home building is way behind the demand. And home builders have been behind for several years in a row. Uh, no fault of theirs. There, there's a lot of issues, a lot of obstacles in their way that have kept them from being able to keep up. And so that's part of, that's a, that's a big part of the demand problem. So right now, uh, I'm sorry, the, the supply problem. So uh, right now, the reality is when you're talking to your client and say, look, our, our supply is lower than, than it's ever been and, and give them those, those hard hitting, those factual numbers that help them to really, really understand, put it in context related to what was happening in 2008, help them to see Right now, it is vastly different. So you may be able to say something like in your market right now, new home starts are running at like two thirds of what they were in the peak of 2005, 2006. We're still not back to uh, on a national level. We're still not back to where we were in 2005, 2006. Demand is so or I'm sorry, supplies, supply is so, so low. Now, on the demand side. Here are the reasons why we're seeing demand today, and here's the reasons why we expect demand to continue. All right, so here's why you want to where you want to talk about the, uh, the the quality of the place uh, where you're where you're selling. All the reasons why people want to move there and be there, why you really don't expect that to change, and specifically related to jobs and employment. It's your chance to talk about the health of your employment environment in your specific market. All right, so it's always great to start with supply and demand. It's really simple for people to get. And they're going to be able to put it in context and relate it to back in 2008. The next thing to do that I would suggest is you want to ask about their time frame, right? So just say to them, all right, I'm, I'm just curious, how, how long do you see yourself living in this home? Like how long would you expect to live in this home? They're probably going to say something like seven years or 10 years, uh, maybe 12 years, something like that. It's probably going to be an answer that's greater than three years, right? And, and probably even greater than five years. Now there's some, there are some exceptions, but it's so likely that they're gonna answer that with, yeah, I see myself in the home place seven years, uh, probably 10 years. So now we can have the rest of the conversation in the context of that, right? So you've, you've kind of pulled them back a little bit. You've, you've pulled them out of the fears of, of today and, and tomorrow and what may happen next month. It's like, okay, let's think about this long-term. Let's pull this back. Now we're going to frame this up based on what you just told me. You just told me you want to live in this home maybe seven years or 10 years or 12 years. Uh, let's put it in the context of that. So then you can talk about the long-term performance of your market. You can say, look, here's the thing about our, our market. This is what our market has done over the long term. So it's really important for you to know this number, for you to know what this number is for your market for the long term. How has your market performed 
over the long term, right? So for example, I'm, I'm super familiar with the, with the Denver market. And what I know based on 40 years of data is that that market appreciates roughly 6% per year over those 40 years. So we, we can talk about that if it's someone looking in Denver. So you, you just need to know the number for you in your market, understand what has your market done over the long term and be able to speak to that and then you can say what, what we expect going forward for the long term is for our market to do just that. You know, all markets seek balance over time. Uh, it's called equilibrium equilibrium theory, which turns out is a hard thing to say, but uh, all markets seek balance over time. So how our market has done over the long term is what we expect it to do going forward uh, into the long term for as long as you own your home. So that my my best prediction for what your property will do for the seven, 10, 12 years that you're gonna own it, it's probably gonna, on average, appreciate that, what it, what it already has done, right? So pull back, talk about long-term performance, that will start to put them at ease. They'll be less worked up about what's happening today, what's happening tomorrow, what, what may happen next month. Then you can go to the fundamentals. Fundamentals, this is such a powerful word that I've learned and people really appreciate learning about the fundamentals or being reminded of the fundamentals and just say, look, here's the thing. Here's why our market has performed that way for the long term. And here's why we think our market will keep doing that for the long term. It's, it's because of the fundamentals uh, of our market. So what does your market have fundamentally? What does it have in place fundamentally? Does it have a really diverse economy with all kinds of different employers, right? So the employment eggs are, are not all in, in one basket. Are there really uh, significant things as it relates to quality of life there? Is it the weather? Is it recreation? Is it proximity uh, to certain uh, great things and, and fun things and, and attractions, right? Is it uh, its location geographically, right? Is it, does it tend to be a, an, an, a commerce hub? Does it tend to attract a certain kind of population? You know, is it attracting millennials? And, and so that's why we're so uh, optimistic about the future of our local economy, because we're attracting all these young people here, these young educated people here, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You need to know and be able to speak to the fundamentals of your market. What are the fundamentals of your market that you can remind your clients of that, again, will put the, uh, the long-term performance conversation in context and be like, yeah, I get it. Okay. So the market has done this for the long term. And this is why you expect it to do the same thing for the long term going forward because of the fundamentals, the fundamentals of the market. So know your fundamentals, right? No, know, know your fundamentals. Okay. Again, if you're watching live, I so appreciate it. And uh, give me a like, uh, make it, even make a comment if you want, if this, uh, if you're finding this to be helpful so far, that's helpful to me. I so appreciate that. I'm gonna give you a couple more things here in terms of how we frame up the answer to, am I buying right now at the very top of the market? I sure don't want to buy at the top. The next thing to talk about, of course, is interest rates. And I find that clients overlook this, right? They, they take some things for granted when it comes to interest rates. They get so caught up in price uh, because price is the, the most obvious thing. It's the most obvious thing talked about. Even in the media, you know, there's so much to talk about price what about interest rates and what about how interest rates will impact this whole scenario so then just say to them all right, all right let me ask you this you uh you see yourself living in the home seven years 10 years 12 years or whatever they told you just say back to them so just curious how how do you see interest rates uh going forward for the long term like where, where do you see interest rates in, in five or ten or, or 12 years and what they're going to say what we would all imagine what we would all predict is that yeah we, we see rates rates going higher Experts predict rates to be roughly a half a percent higher by the end of 2021 compared to where they are now. And what that means for a buyer, that would be a 5% increase in monthly payments, right? So just uh, remind them of that. If for some reason they want to give up, if for some reason they want to go on the sidelines, if some reason, that, you know what, I'm just going to wait, I'm not so sure uh, about this. Uh, I'm thinking that prices are going to go down. Well, well, guess what? Right now, they're buying at the bottom of interest rates. Do we really expect from today going forward, could we reasonably reason, reasonably, uh, sorry, expect that rates are, are gonna be any lower? Like, are they gonna be significantly lower 
compared to today at any time into the future, um, I would bet money no, that in a significant way, there's, there's no way uh, that that will happen. So remind them of that. So that's another reason to stay in the game now. That's another reason why you wanna keep going. That's another thing um, that would make you want to keep going if your fear is, well, well prices are, are, I'm buying at the top, prices are, are gonna go down. Well, guess what? Interest rates are the lowest right now that we expect them really to ever be from this point going forward into the future and the experts would concur with that. So then the, the way to wrap this up, I think after you've walked them through all these different pieces, after you've framed up this conversation, you've asked them back some really, really good questions. I think the way to finish always is with a really great third party story, all right? So the reality is you can find a third party story either from your own clients or from one of your colleagues' clients that can relate to exactly what they are experiencing now and just share that story with them, right? Just say, look, you guys really remind me uh, of the Smiths and, and the Smiths were, were kind of thinking the same thing. They, they saw this activity, they saw the multiple offers, they, they saw the bidding wars. They started to wonder, is, is right now the top of the market? Oh my gosh. And, and what they were able to do is they were able to kind of step back and just look at how this market has performed for the long term. They thought about how long they're gonna be in the home. They saw the fact that interest rates are really the lowest right now than they're probably ever gonna be uh, going forward. Uh, they saw that fundamentally, there's so many great things about our market. And, and they saw that this, uh, that owning this home will make such a big difference to them in their life. And, and they chose to keep going and they finally got that offer. So you can put, all of this uh, in the context of a third party story, you can you can reinforce what the person is going through by using a third party story. Of course, it's you find one that's true and, and legit, of course, all those things. But, uh, but again, it can be your own story or grab a story from one of your colleagues, all right? So if you don't have your own story, just ask your colleagues about a recent buyer success they had and just ask them, hey, can you tell me the story? Did those people ever fear that they were buying at the top of the market? What helped them to overcome it? Like how did their thought process evolve during that? And then just share that uh, with your people. There's something about third party stories. There, there's something about what's called social proof that just makes people feel more confident about their decisions. That's really what this is all about guys. Just making people feel more confident about their decision, feel more confident about owning feel better about uh, just hanging in there, make an offer after offer so that they can finally get it. And so guys, I hope that this video was helpful to you. Again, it was all about how to, how to answer that question. Am I buying at the top of the market? Uh, for the handful of you guys that, that watch live, I, I so appreciate that. If you're watching the recording, uh, hit me with a like, the subscribe, all the things, you know the deal. Uh, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. I wish you all the success right now. Uh, you all too, you, you guys hang in there, keep going, keep doing great work for your clients. I appreciate all of you and I'll see you soon in the next video. All right, take care, bye.